Now, this is something I've been asked a lot of times, a shocking number of times. Does running my CPU cooler make it go faster? And the answer to that is always, well, it's complicated. You know, if you do this and this and this and this and this and all these things, then yes, it can, but in general, no. But I realized that I've never actually tested it. So today, we're gonna find out. Does your CPU being colder make it perform better in any meaningful way? The Corsair HX1200i delivers 80 plus platinum efficiency for quiet, efficient power and Corsair Link Digital for advanced monitoring and control. Click now to learn more. So our first test here is actually fairly real world. This is Cinebench R15 and we are just getting our, our baseline. I mean, this machine hasn't been touched since we filmed the build guide. So exactly the way we had it set up readings. You can see it's running at five gigahertz, pretty much on the nose with that benchmark running. And then the way that we're actually gonna get temperature readings is not necessarily while running benchmarks, but rather using IDA64 in order to stress the CPU or not stress the CPU. And then there's a couple different ways that we're gonna take temperatures. So I'll bring this up right here. So you can see right now, okay, well that was what CPU load looked like while we were actually running a benchmark, but now it's falling back down again. So we're gonna use this stability test and then we're gonna use a couple of different programs for measuring CPU temps. And the reason for that is they're both measuring it in different ways. Real temp pulls the temperature off the CPU die, which actually doesn't go below zero. So right now it uh, <clears throat> is below zero. And then we're also gonna use um, ASUS's AI Suite, because this one is pulling CPU temperature off a sensor that's near the CPU. Again, not perfect for sub-zero readings, but it's pretty much all we have to go on. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start up our test here because I've already collected my minus 11 and not applicable temperatures off of, uh, off of my software for temps. And we're gonna go ahead and see what they rise to. Okay, so while we're running Firestrike here, I'll go ahead and discuss our temperature results, which are about what we expected. I mean, frankly, we've tested this system before, and while we are presenting this as like a, a range of values as opposed to a real value as far as load temperatures are concerned, all we really need to know is much lower than the other one, because we're not trying to determine how much faster does your CPU run if you cool it a lot. We're just trying to determine if it helps at all, at all. So, yeah, let's see how this goes. Is she like an ice lady? All right, so apparently our fire strike score is better than 97% of all other results. We actually only have a single GTX 980 Hall of Fame in this system. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the results that we need in this configuration. So I'm just gonna save this. Now, we need to reboot the system and run it at stock speed. Extreme stock speed, sub-zero benchmarking, Linus Tech Tips. So I loaded optimized defaults. There are actually a couple of things I don't want to change. So I do want our memory at 1866. Okay, so that's not there anymore. And we should probably also stay in RAID mode since that's how we're booting now, just for the sake of convenience. Okay, so we've got our results at stock speed now. You can see that we fell by about 400 points in 3 d Mark Fire Strike. And now all that's left is to shut this baby down. We're gonna use Restart, because I don't want to apply updates in the middle of benchmarking between runs here. And then we're gonna pull off the phase change and go ahead and unplug the phase change and put this stock cooler on there. Mmm, so sexy. Okay, hold on, I gotta power it down right now. I mean, the results were about what we expected. You're gonna see a drop in score. Um, and it doesn't really tell us anything about our objective today, because what we need to know is how that last number compares to the one we're about to get with the stock cooler. So that's cool. We weren't really getting any, uh, 
any condensation around there or anything. Is so, it cool or it wasn't cool? Wow, it was cool, but not cool in the wrong places. How's that? Oh, balls, this is like gonna take a bit to remove. <laughs> oh, and it's really cold, so it's hard to work with. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Way to go, Ed. You can turn the PC on and let it warm up. Hmm. Whoa, you can see the condensation just evaporate instantly. Well, you missed it, but you would have been able to see that. It was cool. I'm sorry you couldn't experience it. It's, wow, it's still, like, really cold to the touch. Is that still cold? Oh, no, it's warming up. Cool. Well, less cool, but cool for different reasons. Ugh. Terrible process. <laughs> the dark side of face change cooling. Kind of, oh, it's your foot. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of figured you were propositioning me, and I was okay with that. <laughs> It, it made me comfortable. It's okay, the pinky toe is the most sensitive toe. I don't actually know that to be a fact, but it could be. In which case, that probably came across even weirder than I meant it to. Okay, so now this kneaded eraser needs to come out, which does not look like it's actually going to be that easy. So I put nuts around the bottoms of those um, bolts, which is why all the kneaded eraser needs to come off before I can mount any other cooler. Great, mate. We're not going to worry about rma this board back to JJ. You probably know not to take an RMA from me. This way. Ah. I'm trying from the other side. Just, yeah, keep twisting. Yeah, the problem is that I also have to hold the nut in place, and I'm having trouble with that. You know what? I'll get a screwdriver. Ha! It took off the serial number sticker. So much for my RMA. Oh, no. This is going faster, so that's good. Aw, oh, yeah, there's a big chunk. I feel like I'm picking my nose right now and having a lot of success, you know? That felt like a pretty unsatisfying little pick where you know you left the big chunk behind that should have been easy to get, but you just, it just didn't come with the rest because the, you know, the tensile strength of the booger wasn't equal to the uh, attachment force to the wall of the inside of the nose. Did you say booger? Yeah. Booger? Booger. It's two O's. Hey, we're doing pretty well here, actually. Not too shabby. Now all we gotta do is not get any needed eraser into the CPU socket, and we'll be fine. This computer will power back on. You know what? I'm not going to appease my idle curiosity and pull this CPU out, because I think there's a good chance we'll accidentally get some gunk in the, uh, in the socket. So instead, uh, we're just gonna we're gonna go for it. So we'll be back when we're booted up on the stock cooler. The line between bravery and stupid is one often traveled at Linus Media Group. Why do you think that there's not a line separating the two, but instead it's more of a Venn diagram? We just sit in there. We just chill, that's where our building is. All right, that's a good sign. Oh, those CPU temps are a little high. I guess we gotta reapply the thermal goop. Those temps look really high still. What is going on here? Do you think it's because I don't have the socket hold down on? Like what happens when I load it? Oh, you don't. No, I didn't put it on. I just put the cooler on top of it. Uh. It should be fine. The cooler puts I mean, Yeah, it's definitely not working right. Well, you know what? We're going for worst case scenario here. As long as it's stable, this will tell us the difference between sub-zero and like 80 degrees, I guess. So yeah, let's, let's push forward. Here we go. JJ has asked me on occasion, why do you not like AI Suite? I don't know, because it behaves like this. I mean, the system is under load. It wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't under load, but these other programs work when the system's under load. I can move them. Oh crap, I did that thing. Okay, stock speed phase Cinebench score, 700. Here we go. Run. Ba -da, ba, ba, ba. 
Here we go! 817? What? That doesn't make any sense. The phase score seems to be bugged, which I should have noticed back when we ran it. Because you can see we got 700 versus their stock 4770K that does 822. So it's performing normally now and was actually, okay, well, we'll have to come back to this. I don't know what we're gonna do. I, all I can do right now is save these results. So stock speed, stock cooling, Cinebench. And then I'll run 3D Mark. Since it seems to be running normally, like this is in line with its 4770K score. So I'll run 3D Mark and then maybe we will we'll ghetto mount the phase cooler back on there temporarily and uh, let me see if we can get one benchmark out of it before it condenses and drips all over the motherboard. So I'm just basically going to put this around here. <clears throat> so the only sort of, this is, do not do this at home. Here we go. <clears throat> well, there's a difference between being a professional and being professional. Oh, balls. Oh. Oh, I did not want that to happen. No, that's a bad thing. Okay, uh... Why? Why can't anything go right right now? Well, let's use the technique. We should have a counter in the corner of this video for the things not to do. That's what that is for. Yeah. Yeah, that does do that. <laughs> Normally. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Those are like sitting next to the pins, if not on them. Okay. If I just kind of jerk it, that seems to work better. Watch this video. I jerk it. I never recommend mounting a CPU vertically. But if you ever wanted to know how to do it, this is it. Put your finger through the socket to hold it into place while you lower the retention arm. There. Never do that. The 3D Mark one is actually very close to what we got with the air cooler. But we'll rerun both, just in case. I need a stress ball right now. If this thing just shuts down mid-benchmark, you'll know it died from the condensation. What are the chances that it's I don't know, probably less than 10%. He made up completely off the top of his head. And run! Run, my pretties. Well, this seems like as good a time as any to mention our uh, Chiro product that we sponsored this video. This, my friends, is the Chiro Handy. <clears throat> it's a 6,000 milliamp hour battery bank, and I'm sure they were going for, you know, the convenient definition of handy as opposed to the other one. It's got kind of a faux leather finish on it that looks quite nice. It's about, it's about this big next to an Intel stock heatsink, so that should give you some idea. And one of the handiest things about it is the fact that it has an integrated micro B USB cable. So that right there is where you can plug in whatever it is that you could possibly want. So if you wanted to plug in some other cable, say for example, a lightning connector, you could do that. There is a battery level indicator meter doodad, but I can't find the button for it right at the moment. So there you go, there's the LEDs that light up and it charges that up to two amps with compatible devices. Pretty much, um, I guess that's really all there is to say about it, other than that you can check it out at the link below in the video description on Amazon.com. And also, they wanted us to call out that they have a special deal on the Power Plus 3, one that we actually featured in one of our Chiro spots before. So they have that on for $29.99 for a limit of 500 units total. And given, oh, look at that, I found it. I'm not sure how. Given how many of you buy these Chiro deals, that probably actually won't last that long. Did you just squeeze it here or something? What did I do? Oh, you shake it. Oh, that's cool. All right. So back to our results. 823. There we go. That is more like it. What the heck happened last time? 
I don't know whether I'm happy or mad. I'm happy it worked. I'm mad it didn't work the first time. And last time, 12,545 3D marks. And last time what we got with phase was 12,401. So I'm really glad we reran that. Now let's have a look at what we got with stock speed, stock cooling. Hmm. Hmm. Let's put the stock cooler back on and see if we can take another crack at that. Oh, I didn't save it! No! Oh! Well, whatever, you saw it. All right, so it's final conclusion time, and the answer is no. Your CPU running cooler does not affect your performance. Our hypothesis, our prediction, whatever you want to call it, was correct. Um, so you actually have to turn the speed up in order to have it run faster, which makes perfect sense. Because can you imagine with the kind of precisional and precisional precision engineering that goes into a product like this, if just cooling it down made like some parts of it like go faster, it'd be completely out of whack. It makes no sense. So there you go. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Like it if you enjoyed the crazy hijinks. Dislike it if you hate the irresponsibility of what happened here today. Leave a comment if any of all those things are some combination of them all. And as always, don't forget to uh, check out the link in the video description to our community, the one where you can buy a cool t-shirt like this one, and the one where you can change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code. So whenever you buy Chiro battery banks, where did it go? Here it is. That are handy. That is such a funny name for it, and they probably don't even know why. Uh, or whatever else it is you buy on Amazon, you will we'll get a small kickback. Thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.